only on a screen. So I think I hope we're going to have fun today. Uh, we'll be showing you an animation that is a moving story, and I'll be talking, and we'll also be asking you questions in the middle. Okay, so please be ready to respond. Uh, and there's also going to be some fun activities in the middle and towards the end. So everybody ready? Anusha, you want to say anything in the beginning? Yes. Let's go ahead. Okay, so you all know the thumbs up sign and you know, and somebody is coming upside down, which is nice. Arya, you're, you're, you're upside down, which is great, actually. Nice. <laughs> okay, let's start. So this is a story of a little hedgehog called Shero. Do you all know what a hedgehog is? Anybody heard of it? Anybody seen one? Yes. I haven't seen yeah, one. Where? I have seen one. Where? I've seen a porcupine squid. Okay, you've seen a porcupine quill. Ah, yes, you've seen a porcupine. You've seen a porcupine quill, and in fact, there will be a porcupine also in the story. She'll come in a bit later. But a hedgehog is actually a much smaller, very small. A porcupine is a bit big. Hedgehog is a really small thing. It look looks a little bit like a porcupine, but it doesn't have the same quills. It has hair like what you see on this picture. So this is a story of uh, a little baby pocket, uh, hedgehog called Shero. And uh, why is it Shero to the rescue? What is she rescuing? That's exactly what we're going to tell you. Anusha, let's go on. So this story is set in a place called Kutch. Does anybody know where Kutch is? So Anusha is taking uh, the cursor. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so you have to tell us where to stop. So you stop when you want to stop. Where it is. is that where it is? Is this? Is this where it is? You have to say stop huh, when you want her to stop. Stop. Okay, wonderful. Right. Dot looks like a lion. Yes, it's actually uh, north of. So the lion is what you see here. I don't know if you can see my cursor. But the lion is somewhere here in southern Gujarat. And Kutch is actually this whole portion here. Okay. And right next to it on the left side is what? Do you know? Which country? I'm in grade one. Do you know which country is here? This is what I'm seeing. Rajasthan. Showing you. Rajasthan. That's Pakistan. So it's right next to Pakistan. Okay. Let's zoom in a bit more. So that is Kutch and you can see what looks like water and you can see what looks like white sand or white salt or something. What do you think that is? Do you know where your salt? You all eat salt, right? Do you know where your salt comes from? Yeah, it comes from the sea. Yeah, it comes from, so it comes from the water. The so you um, keep it yes. out when there's the sun, when the sun is there. And yes. during the day, it will evap evaporate. The water will evaporate and it will yes. leave salt. Wonderful. So you can actually see here, this is the sea in Kutch. And on the side, you see the white, white stuff. That's actually salt that's uh, uh, left behind with, after evaporation. So there's the sea in Kutch, but there's also, there's also desert. So this kind of sand, very, very hot, very dry, very little rainfall in, in Kutch. And there's also lots and lots of grass. Okay, so there's grassland like you can see here. And there's a lot of different kind of wildlife which lives only in this kind of habitat. And you must remember this because the story is about how this kind of a home for lots of wildlife is threatened and how the animals save their home. So the story begins with uh, Shero and her mother and father and uh, hedgehogs as you, some of you might know, live under the ground. So that's their burrow, that's their home. So Shero is looking very, very disturbed. She's not even eating her food properly. And the parents are saying, what is the problem? What's the problem? And she, she's heard something on top of the burrow. So she goes out to investigate. And she sees these strange men who she's never seen before. They're doing something funny. They, she can't figure out exactly what it is. So she goes up close and she tries to understand what exactly are these men doing? Why are they here? Why are they on my home, what are they doing? But she can't understand. So she says, okay, let me go and ask my go uncle. 
uh, who is her uncle? Let's go and see. So she scampers off, and she goes to meet this scary-looking her uncle. What is that? It's a monitor lizard. You all have seen lizards in your house, right? Small, very yep. small, six inches, seven Don't inches. Small. Yeah. So it's part of the same family, but this monitor lizard lives in the grassland or in the forest, and is much, much, much bigger. It can be as If you stand it up, it can be as tall as some of you kids. So it's monitor lizard, but it's not dangerous, not for human beings. Okay, it eats little insects and small creatures and so on. So Shero goes up to Go Uncle and says, "Go Uncle, Go Uncle, have you seen these men? Do you know what's happening here?" So Go Uncle is also confused and and uh, says, "Look, I don't know. I've also seen them, but I really don't know what's happening. You know what? We should go and ask." Saslu, because Saslu has these big, big ears, and maybe Saslu has heard something. So they go up and they look for two very large. They look like leaves, but they're actually ears sticking out of the grass. Can you see it there? They're rabbits. Uh, yes. Uh, so they go up close and they say, "Oh, I think that's Saslu," and then suddenly pops up Saslu. Now Saslu is actually not a rabbit; it's a hare, and we'll tell you later on, okay, what the difference is? Because in India we don't have rabbits; we only have hares in the wild. That is in. I know that forest. hares are bigger than rabbits. Yes, one of the things is they're bigger, ears are bigger, and in India we only have hares. So this is a Indian hare. She pops out and says, "Oh, what are you two doing here? Why are you here? Why are you disturbing me?" So then they tell her that. look there's a problem there's something there's some strange thing happening in the grasslands these men are there have you heard anything and saslu says you know i have actually heard something from a distance something about some factory and some land and something but i also don't know what's happening i really don't know so what should we do what should we do so the three of them actually start discussing and then suddenly they see this shadow on top and they get really scared what is this thing coming from on top but it turns out only to be their old friend bagla the egret the egrets are birds that live near lakes or in rivers and she is coming down she says what is this why are you people having a conference here why are the three of you gathered here what a strange thing that i'm seeing and so they explain to her they say look we've seen these men we don't know what's happening have you seen something because you fly on top so maybe you've seen something from on top and she says you know what the other day i had the most scary experience i was sitting and eating some insects and suddenly this big monster with these huge jaws came up i got really scared and i flew off from there i have no idea what it is but maybe that monster is connected to these men so we should really try to find out but how do we find out so then they think oh maybe we should ask uh, humans and then they all say no 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 how can we ask humans we don't go close to human beings and they say but you know there are humans that are living with us in the grassland for a long long time they call them aldharis and let, instead of going to them we can go to their buffaloes so bagla says i have a friend who lives in the grassland called kado pado he is a big buffalo and he's all the time he's chewing grass and he looks very very happy when he's chewing grass and i go and sit on his back sometimes and eat the insects that are there so we have a good friendship let's go and ask him so then they all go off uh, to the grassland where there's kado pado and a lot of the other buffaloes are grazing the grass and they ask kado pado do you know what's happening have you heard anything and, and kado pado said no i haven't but you know what let's go and ask my master the person who brings us out for grazing his name is suleiman kaka so they go and of course it's lunch time so suleiman kaka is having lunch and he's very surprised because he says to kado pado he says look in the evening i have to drag you back home because you don't want to go back from your food but today you come back at lunch time only what is happening so then shero explains to him saying we have seen these men suleiman kaka do you know what's happening and suleiman
mouse-like creatures called Undardo, and they've been joined by uh, Varu the wolf and her little pups, and they've been joined by uh, the wild donkey, which also lives in Kutch, um, which is called the Gurkar, and many other animals. And Shero tells them exactly what's happening. They've also been joined by Shahudi, by the way. That's the porcupine you all remembered when I showed you the hedgehog picture, no? So all these animals, when they hear what's happening, they're very, very worried. They say, what will we do? We have to do something. We have to save our homes. Varu and her babies are crying and the gulper and the oont. Oont is also there. They're all saying, we can't let this happen. Something has to be done. So they're talking and talking and they're trying to figure out what can be done. How can we save our... There's Shahudi and she's sleeping. Why is she sleeping? Because it's still daytime and porcupines sleep in the day. They only come out at night. So she's there, but she's actually been quietly listening also. She's not fully asleep. And then suddenly, while they're talking about what to do, she gets up and she throws some of her quills. One of you said you've seen a porcupine quill, right? Or some of you have seen this very sharp yeah, yeah. quill. Yeah? yeah, and so, um, day before yesterday, I went to... A day before yesterday, I came back from this place called Mahabaleshwar and I went on a trek and, and I saw porcupine quills. Nice, Kai, thanks. Yes, so you, you, you see, you know how sharp they are. They can really hurt you. So suddenly, Shauri gets up and, and drops a, a lot of quills, which almost hit uh, Shero. And she says, wow, I think I have an idea of what to do with these quills. But, you know, you nearly quilled me just now by throwing those quills on me. But so then suddenly she's looking at it and she's saying, okay, what do we do? What do we do? Then this big hand snatches the quill away from her. And it turns out to be Shero's mother. She's saying, what are you doing out so evening, so late in the evening? And she scolds all the animals saying, why are you keeping Shero here? It's time for her dinner and for her bedtime. So she tells Shero, come back home just now. This kind of thing you shouldn't be doing late in the evening. Right? So she drags Shero off. Shero doesn't want to go back home because she says the animals are still planning something. And I want to also be part of the planning. But of course, she has to go back home. So that night... She's very, very restless. She can't sleep. She's tossing and turning. She's trying to say, oh, what is it the animals are planning? We must do something. First thing in the morning, as soon as it's daylight and dawn, she gets up and she scampers off because she wants to know exactly what the animals are doing. She has some idea, but she doesn't really know. And she scampers off and comes uh, to the edge of the grassland where she finds Shahudi and Undardo laughing away and she's saying, why are you people laughing? It's such a terrible situation. We must do something. And then suddenly while she's looking, she heard, hears, boom, boom, two very loud noises coming and she looks on the road and she sees the monster, the same monster that Bagla had described. She sees the monster and both the tires of the monster, which is actually a big machine for digging out the earth, have been have burst. How did they burst? Anybody can guess? Yes. 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 That's right. So Shahudi's quills have been put on the road. So when the bulldozer comes, the tires burst. And then suddenly they see that the it's not just the tires bursting, but the men suddenly look behind and they see that the monster is actually disappearing. The whole machine is going straight into the ground. They say, what is happening? This was a road. This was a pakka road. Now, why is the machine disappearing? And then they see hundreds of undardos coming out of a hole. You know what they've done? Overnight, they've dug a hole in the road so that the machine actually can't go any further. It's, it's collapsed and gone straight into the hole. So that was their night plan, saying, how do we stop this machine from coming and destroying our grassland? So these men, they're really angry and they call up the owner of the factory and they say, look, this is what's happened. And we think these animals are responsible. We should do something. So the owner of the factory immediately leaves from the nearby town of Bhuj, which is the head headquarters of uh, Kutch. He says, okay, I'm going to teach these animals a lesson. But along the way, he gets hit by a storm and it's a very strange storm. It's a storm that's really colorful. And when he looks closely, he finds that it's actually thousands and thousands and thousands of butterflies and moths and uh, dragonflies and all kinds of other insects. And they have come out to stop him from going further. And then when that clears, 
He sees the strangest rally, the ever strangest ever procession he's seen in his life. It's hundreds of animals of all kinds who are marching on the road, heading to Bhuj, the town, because they say, we are going to go and tell the, these human beings that they can't destroy our homes. So there's Varu and all of her friends and babies. There's Shero leading the procession. There's uh, Shahudi and all her friends, very sleepy because this is daytime. They're supposed to be sleeping, but still they want to save their homes. And there's all sorts of other creatures. There are kites and eagles and cranes and storks. And all of them are carrying slogans saying, save our kach, kach ne bachao. No factories in Kutch, no factories, save our homes. So this big procession finds its way to Bhuj town. And in Bhuj town, animals here, we must ask them. So they all troop into Bhuj and then they're surprised because they find that there are some human beings also, including kids from a school like you, who are the Kutch is not a home only for human beings. It's also a home for animals. So we have to stop, save their homes. So there are people, there are people from the Maldhari community, you know, the buffalo herders who from Suleiman Kaka is also there. And they all join the procession and they go up to the office of the district collector. Does anybody know who the district collector is or what the district collector is? Like the prime minister, no. like how we have prime minister or this is like the person who owns the place, who, who takes care of it and says... Yes, so I he's a, gov he's a government know. officer or she is a government officer who is in charge of the district. And Kutch, the whole of Kutch is one district. So he's actually in charge of the whole thing. So it's under him that a factory would be made or not made. So that's why they're going to him and saying, please stop this factory. So they go, they bang on the gate, they make all kinds of noises, all the animal noises, the humans are shouting slogans, all of that. So this district collector is sitting and doing his office work and he, he hears all this big cacophony of noise and he says, what is happening? I've never heard this before. He goes to the window, he looks down and he sees all this, this huge number of animals and people with slogans, with placards, shouting and asking to be let in. So he tells his officers saying, please let them in. Let's see what their problem is or what their issue is. Why are they here? So they let in and uh, Suleiman Kaka and Shero and Gorpad and Varu, they all go into the office and they tell him, you are planning to build a factory on our home. We won't allow it. It's not good. We will lose our home. Please stop it. And they give him the plans of the factory because just in case he doesn't know what's happening. Sometimes, you know, even a government officer may not know what's happening in his district. So the district collector takes it and he crumples up the whole plan and he throws it away. And everybody's really, really surprised. What is this? Why is this happening? And he tells them, look, even before you came here, you already won. Because your news, the news of your protest has reached us. It reached Ahmedabad, it reached New Delhi. And all the officials, they got together and they said, yes, this is a correct demand. The, the animals are right in saying that their homes will be destroyed. So we should not build the factory there. So already a decision has been taken that we will not disturb your grassland. We won't disturb your lake. We won't disturb your forest. And please go home and be safe and be happy. So, of course, everybody is really, really surprised and everybody is so happy at hearing this. So, they start making all their noises. Now, what are these noises? What is a wolf's noise? Anybody can tell me. Oh, I can't hear anybody. Come on. Open, yes. Okay. What about what about a stop? What about a buffalo? What does a buffalo do? Uh, and donkeys? 
What about other animals? What about storks? Snakes. Eagles. Eagles. Snakes. Frogs. Okay, we'll 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 at, we'll get to the questions at the end. Right now, we're going to make everybody is going to join me in making a noise because that's what the animals are doing. They're so happy. They're making all the noises. Okay, so I'm going to count to three, and then everybody switch on your mic and make whatever animal noise you can. Okay, one, two. Three. Let's go. Oh. Okay. Wonderful. Anusha, let's finish the story. So they make all this noise. The they're all really happy, and it's in the evening already. They start going back home. Poor uh, Go Uncle is really tired, so he's sleeping on Godpard's. back and all the animals very happily are going back to their homes to rest and be safe wherever they are in their grassland their lake their forest or whatever their homes are under the ground over the ground everywhere okay so that's how shero comes to the rescue of her home and the home how, of all the other animals how did you make this it's like very cool thank you thank So you have to ask Anusha because all the drawings are hers and the animation is also hers. Anusha, how did you make it? Like, how did you make it move in the PPT? That that's also ah, that's, really. that's Anusha's secret. Anusha, tell us. Did you all use watercolors? Uh, Anusha, you're on mute. You painted it. Can't hear you. You painted it. Not working. Can't hear you, Anusha. So we can't hear you. Just check your mic. You use watercolor. It's unmuted, but we can't hear you. It's on a PPT. That's actually quite talented. Okay, I think she might have to reconnect. Hello. Yeah. Yes. You're back. Good. You're back. Oh. Yeah. Hello, am I audible? Yes. Can you hear me? But I can't hear anyone now. Did you play it uh, now? Is everyone else muted? Go ahead. We can hear okay. you. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I seem to be the only. I can't hear anyone. No, I think the audio is not connected. My audio is not connected. Hmm. Oh yeah, I, okay. Everyone saying like that they can hear me, but I can't hear them. Um, so you can type your questions in the chat, maybe. So yeah, I made everything, and uh, I made the backgrounds with watercolors. So I would uh, okay. How did I make it move? So I used um, this program. I am an animator. so i studied animation i studied how to make it move so how i make it move is i draw each thing frame by frame like i draw i start making a drawing and okay actually why don't i show you um let me just get my uh i i use a, a tablet to work on so i draw on it like an ipad or something i'll just get it Okay, so I think it's getting it. Uh, Ava, you wanted to ask the question. So talented, it's so much. I want to say two things. The first thing, Miss Labian, we need to be able to chat with everyone. Yes, I have enabled it. I have enabled okay, it. Okay, can, um, can you still hear me? Can everybody else uh, just yeah. be quiet for a minute? Let, Ava, let's I use it. this. It's like a oh, uh, tablet, and I draw on it. Okay. And I'll just connect it up, and then I'll share my screen. Okay, let Anusha finish, and then we can. Ava, can we let Anusha finish? Then we can get to your question. I want to me? do two things. The first thing is they should be. Called... Okay, some of you all are animators. Skills. They should be called skills and not quiz. For some they... reason, I I I can't hear anyone. Desire. Everyone else can hear me. And the second thing is, I wanted to say that. 
They're cutting down trees for the coastal road, and my plan is trying to stop them cutting down trees. They're cutting down the whole garden almost, and there are many squirrels and crows and birds playing in that garden. Sorry, I missed everything. Now, now my speakers are working, and I think like you can hear me. We can hear you. Can you hear us, Anusha? Yeah, I can hear you all now. Okay, just yeah, hold on now because uh, yeah. we got we got two uh, questions from Ava, so let's just respond to. Okay, them. okay. Can hear you one. from? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can everybody else uh, wait? We'll get to everybody. Okay, so let's me just respond to Ava. Your first question was about quills and kills, right? I said they should be called kills. Yeah. So we have used that as a in the book. It's a pun. You know what a pun is? A pun is when two words sound similar, but they mean very different things. Also known as a homo. They can kill you because they're so sharp. Ah, that's right. That's right. But they're actually called quills. Pun is like a pun. Pun sounds like an old thing. Something. Wait, 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 wait. Can everybody else be quiet for a second? Just a second. Let me just ask answer the second question. So, Ava, your second question is the coastal road and many, many other roads. Big roads that are being made in India, unfortunately, yeah, they mean. It's been made in the sea, so all the sea animals are dying, and yeah. so is the garden. Yeah, and, and yeah, this, since I was two, I used to go and play there, play there for. Yeah. They're, they're building the coastal road outside my house. It's you can see over. Yeah, and they're cutting. Oh wow! Yeah, I can see, see that guy. so in high in school long 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 back we protested against the destruction of uh, forest area in new delhi i was growing up in new delhi yeah and we protested we said we went and met the government officers we did everything we put it into the newspapers and we did that for one whole year and fortunately then the government said yes it is correct we should not be destroying the this forest so sometimes yeah. it works sometimes it doesn't But we have to keep trying, huh? Don't be discouraged by the fact that it didn't work. Yeah. Just keep trying. Wonderful Can I say something? Said. Yes. Like related to the coastal road cut topic, the government is was thinking once of making a monorail in Panjil, monorail train. So uh, they were gonna have to cut through a farm, my uh, my Marcy's farm. Hmm. But then it never happened. So that's luck. But the coastal road is happening, and yeah, now they're also... gonna make the Gujarat the flyover to Gujarat, the expressway to Gujarat. Yes. But so it the point they're uh, doing it for good reasons, like for example, the imports and exports can be taken overnight instead of shipment. Right. Uh, but the They're gonna break through the entrance of the farm, so that makes matters a lot worse. So there are good reasons and bad reasons for making yeah. stuff. So I think uh, your name is Kahan. Kahan. Yes. Okay, Kahan. I think uh, so. These are all things that I think you'll learn more and more about as you grow up, because uh, mm -hmm. again the question is how much exports and what exports are good for us and for whom. all exports are not necessarily good no all imports yeah. are not good either so our question is what do we really need to be happy huh? as kids as adults what is it that we really need do we need more and more and more cars do we need more and more and more money do sometimes we need more and more televisions need... hmm sometimes, sometimes we just need one place to just yes. sit down 
with nothing disturbing you nothing yeah. you need to look at like a screen nowadays we need that <laughs> yeah. and we need one place where no noise will come and, and how wonderful if in our cities us. how wonderful if in our cities we had a place like that we all had places like that with yeah. under a tree or in a forest or in a park or even in our own house but right now we can't do that because so much of our forest has been cut in the in the cities if you want to do that in mumbai you have to go to borivali which might be too far for you so and there's so much traffic noise outside our house so it's not quiet yeah, at all no the so these are all questions we have to ask the night, what is in the, hmm? in the night in my house every night is not only one night every night on one row on one road you see 10 trucks lined up for the postal road yeah so that's exactly and you also we also have to understand that they are taking something from somewhere else where again some wildlife might be destroyed or some local people's home might be getting destroyed or some grassland might be getting destroyed so how much more do we keep growing and wanting more and more and more this is a question we have to ask ourselves which also means our own lifestyle no how do we live do we want uh, do all of us want a mobile phone and want to change it every 6 months do we want a 40 inch big color television set do we want this that this that all the time we are asking more and more and more somewhere somebody is being uh, destroyed because of that so we have to ask ourselves can we be happy with less we have to have enough food and we have to have entertainment and we have to have a home to live in and water to drink but after all of that do we still want more and more and more this is something we have to ask we need to have a balanced we need to have it balanced yes, yes absolutely okay so let's uh, get back to anusha and then we'll yes, come back with some questions anusha let's all get back to us. yeah your magic okay. and everybody let's go on mute please okay um hold on so i'm going to share my screen again and share okay so this is one scene this is a an animation program an animation software called tv paint so it's good for 2d animation so that means you can just draw on it like it were a paper but you have frames in a sequence so this is a rough animation of shahudi sleeping so it's like you know she is just breathing rising and falling so each frame is one drawing so this is one drawing then after eight like how many frames are in a second um have you heard of this phenomenon called persistence of vision no no okay so it's like no, it's an too optical much, yeah. it's it's like a scientific pheno- it's a, it's a phenomenon where um our eyes and our brain when we see something that is passing at like 1/8 of a second or you know really fast it looks like it's you know animated or it looks like it's moving even if it's a static image what is animation it's just a sequence of many drawings and each of those drawings is still but because they pass by in front of the tiny rectangular frame so fast it looks like movement like you can see this if you take a pencil and you start you know holding it loosely and you look at it, it looks kind of bendy have you ever done this bendy pencil thing so it looks like it's rubber but that's because our eyes are perceiving it like you know it's rubber but actually it's a rigid thing but when you do it like this it looks kind of rubbery so something like that is what happens so i've drawn one drawing and then there's another drawing which is slightly different and another drawing which is even more different you can see the slight differences and when i play this really fast like at 24 frames per second that is 24 drawings which flash past your eyes in one second it looks like one second of movement but if it were a slower frame rate like 8 frames per second it would look kind of choppy you know you can see this happening when there's a video lag you know how many times have your video lag and you can see you know your friend's face is here and then suddenly it's there and then suddenly it's there that's cause the frame rate is bad or you see this in video games right like the frame rate of a video game how smooth the video game looks at you know it's oh, different oh sometimes oh sometimes 
sometimes when my internet is bad in my um and i'm playing a video game on the computer yeah. then um it just like i can see it in pictures and also when i'm on a call with my friends and they're sharing um yeah. their screen uh, their game screen and the net isn't very good so then it just um so i can see it like only pics pictures i can't really see a smooth video exactly like so exactly so if you make enough drawings then it looks like a smooth video and animation is just that kind of illusion where you make one drawing then you make another drawing try it with a flip book have any of you ever made a flip book i believe some of you and have tried animation as well i have i have tried yes you can have it you can push up actually even in games which is scratch desktop Okay. Very good. So yeah, that's the basic principle behind this. But can you all can you all imagine before computers came, this was done purely by hand. By hand, yeah, by hand. I, uh, and my, I have old, also. You also done that, Anush. Yeah. So every frame had to be made by hand and then put together. So I would start. How did it, how did it become color? So. first i would start with this rough drawing because i didn't want to make you know all the color and all the detail only to you know get it wrong because you know it takes a lot of trial and error flipping back and forth to each frame to you know make sure it looks like it's smooth otherwise if i draw shahudi's head slightly big in one frame and then it's a different size in the other frame it looks like it's boiling you know the size will look like it's dancing like have you ever taken two photographs very fast together and then you're flipping through it in your phone's gallery and it looks like your friend is moving like doing a small like before after before after like a flip so if the size of different things is different it looks kind of different what yeah okay so, so let's uh, i think because our time is getting up we have three more quick questions minutes. Okay. Uh, so let's see. Ava and Kahan have already asked, so we'll get back to you. I think Kaya and Kimaya want to ask something. Go ahead. So why why is there why is this story about a hedgehog instead of any other animal? Oh, because uh, hedgehogs are considered uh, well. I found it very cu cute, first of all, but also because hedgehogs live under the ground, and I wanted to write a story about a creature that very few people know about. because it lives under the ground it's small and so most of us don't know we know about porcupines we know about the uh, wolves we know about uh, alligator uh, crocodiles etc but very few people know about hedgehogs so i just want to bring out something that's very small very cute very little known but also really brave and strong you know so it's also a story about how it doesn't matter what your size is where you live how you are but you can be brave and strong and you can change the world okay kahan yeah you want oh, to ask I, something i, I, I saw your hand up i forgot i forgot to lower it oh okay, no problem ava my nani is going to court to fight the coastal road as well very good very good excellent and also i had this book click like, i finished it like i think yesterday and on one side there was red and the other side there was blue so i kept on flipping the book and, and it made my mother very dizzy <laughs> okay we have uh, one more question and then we're going to end by giving you i mean showing you pictures of the animals and asking you if you remember the names that i gave okay I think, I think let's do that let's do that okay after the last question so let's uh, have yeah. udita ask the last question and then we'll go on to the uh, animal quiz i want yeah. question with i want i don't really have a question but i but i wanted to say that the book was really nice thank you thank you thank you very much miss i want doubt after this is again seeing library so is there something else or is it library no this is it after this we have nothing okay anusha let's show the animals and then uh, kids you all have to shout out if you remember the names okay think, yeah uh, i think um, the, one second huh? the hedgehog you drew is very cute thank you 
thank ah, you anusha thank anusha you have to thank anusha for that anusha thank has also you. drawn another new children's book which uh, i'm sure labdi auntie will show you your art is very creative thank you i appreciate that okay so now we're going to how long does it take to that. make the whole book sorry how long, how long? Does it take to make this whole book like it's very cool so it took how long did it take <laughs> it took almost uh, a year and a half and then like a little more time to make some corrections and you know i got feedback on it from ashish like we were working together on this for a long time <laughs> yeah a year and a half because you know there were a lot of backgrounds a lot of watercolor okay let's, let's see the pictures i think you can start with the yeah yeah hair. yes yeah yes here we are okay so this is the hair does anybody remember the name in the book no anybody no what no. was the name of the character of the hair in the book come on rack your brains a bit or something huh saslu or something saslu yes saslu so actually all the names in the book of the character of the animals these are gujarati names okay so saslu or sasla is how people in gujarat call the hair and also quickly to show you the hair is different the hair is firstly much bigger it lives in uh, in india in a lot of uh, drier areas rabbits that you see in europe and other parts of the world they live in more wet areas they are sm generally smaller but of course they are related to each other and you can see that with your uh, how similar they look no okay next one this okay. is the hedgehog a porcupine Is it a porcupine or a hedgehog? Anusha. No, hedgehog. It's a hedgehog. It's a hedgehog. Yes. So what is, is a hedgehog called in Gujarati? Hero. Like. Hero is the name. Hero. 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 Okay, next one. This is the monitor lizard. What is the monitor lizard called? Which uncle? Huh? Oh, uncle. Oh, uncle. Yes. Oh, uncle. Oh, uncle. It's really, really big. Ah, huh? three feet long. Okay, next. So interesting. Ah, uh, Ashish, you can tell them that if it stands, it's as tall as them, right? Yes. Yes. If you stand it up like that, then it will be as tall as all of you. Oh, it's that big. Yes, but it's not uh, harmful or dangerous to human beings. Usually, it will run away. It's scared. It, okay, this is the egret. Can, wait, wait. Uh, can I say something about the monitor lizard? Um, I think yes. it, um, it's not lethal for humans, but it can, it can. Um, yeah. But if if you um do, if you um disturb it or something, then um it it can bite you and it, it can. Oh yeah, of course. Lizard. Any animal. Yeah. It's not any lizard. animal. It's an animal. It will. It will say. Uh, it will feel that. If you threaten me, you get it straight back to you. Of course, I mean it's like all of us. No, if we have teeth, any animal that has teeth can bite. So yeah, like be, in self uh, defense, in self defense, yeah. you will bite. You will kick in self defense. Yeah. In self defense, yes, exactly. <laughs> you can use claws. You can use your teeth. Anything that is, but is that's when you're trying to defend yourself. Yes. Okay, next. That's the egret. What was the egret called in the story? Anybody remember? Starts with a B. Can I go? B B Buglo. Buglo. That's right. <laughs> Not bungalow, yes. which you live in. Buglo. <laughs> Next. The buffalo. What was what was the buffalo called? Come on, kids. Mm. This is easy. Are you Pedro or something? Carlo. Close. Close. Pardo. Pardo, 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 black. Pardo. Pardo, that's right. Next. Okay, the one on the first left-hand side. That is a. That's a porcupine. Is it a porcupine? Yeah. I've What was the porcupine so called? Chowdy. Chowdy, wonderful. Chowdy. The, the mouse-like one here. The mouse-like creature. Jobel. The jobel. 
Yeah, it's a gerbil. It's not a mouse. It's a gerbil, but it's closely related to a mouse. This is what lives in the desert and grasslands. And its name in the book, in the story. Come on, kids. Same, easy same one. as a same as a mouse. Easy one. Yeah. Underdo. Underdo. Hey. Underdo. And then the big donkey-like thing on the right, that actually is a wild donkey. but we didn't encounter it that much in the story if you see the book it comes up much more it's called the ghudkar or the ghadkar and then the wolf what was the wolf called oh come on remember anusha you tell oh uh, varu. Varu. varu varu that's right and the last one is the camel camel you should know What is it called in? Yeah. Oh, that's right. In Hindi, in Gujarati, it's the same thing, no? Yeah. Okay. I think we have. We are done. The animals, and we're done. So, Labdi, you want to finish, or any more questions? Any questions? Say? Anybody? No question. I think we'll take one last one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, 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 so,
Excuse One, two, three, go. This is fun. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chicky Mama. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you have to, you have to thank, thank you, us with Mama. animal sounds. No, the oh. Yeah, yeah, make, uh, make animal sounds. Everybody, I'm going to. Bye. I'm going to put on a. Bye. Uh, bye. Bye. Uh, Chiki Mama. Bye, bye. Anusha. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 And thanks. I'm sharing bye. a Padlet link with you all. Bye. I'm sharing a Padlet bye. link. Kids, kids, listen. Wait, wait, kids. kids hang, hang on. Hang on. One second. Hang listen, on, please. kids. I'm going to share a Padlet link with you all. I want you all to put uh, what you thought of the session on it and share it with the whole class. Is that a good idea? Excuse me. Can I say something? Where is the Padlet link going to be? I'm going to put it on the chat. May I say something? Yes, Ava, you may say something. Your book is so famous. That if that on Amazon, my mom checked if we could buy the book and it says currently unavailable because so many people have bought it it's out oh. of <laughs> <laughs> okay I'll so you can sure buy it on kalpa Bricks also yeah you you can buy it on a website called kalpa Bricks. i will share that too on the chat okay guys have you seen the chat can you all see the link yeah Yes. We, we have a special. I have a special guest who wants to say thank you. One second.